Good morning, afternoon and evening my crazies. My name's Angela, I'm the Crazy Poppy Lady and welcome back to this week's Stitch A Week. Now you're sitting there thinking, what is going on Ange? There's nothing in front of me. Well actually there is. Today we are going to be doing this stitch here. Now I can't actually pronounce this stitch but it is a Tunisian stitch. Um, now when I first did this I was following a different tutorial on the cha um, on YouTube because I did this years and years ago way before the channel started and um, the problem I had with this pattern was there was no ending okay it gave you a wibbly wobbly and um, edge so I cheated and I actually folded my squares over and halved them and then sewed along to give me a straight edge but that was my how I fixed it back then um, when I'd only been crocheting a short time which is why this was also my geriatric cat's blanket she loved it so that was the main thing but today's tutorial excuse the ends I still haven't got around to sewing them in is going to be for this square here now we are working a, a corner to corner method on this which means there is no worries about an odd triangle every other row um, it means that we're going to have a, a lovely a square square <laughs> okay it may look difficult to start with but honestly it isn't um, the main things that you will need are a, a crochet hook which I've lost my normal one let's go get it right um the things you're going to need today to complete this is a, a crochet hook with a, a decent shaft on it if you haven't got something similar to this then i would suggest going back to the good old faithful ones i'm sure all of us have got the one of these style hooks in our stash somewhere i just grabbed this one for showing purposes I didn't work it on a four a uh, three right now today i'm using a dk weight yarn in two different colors okay and i am using a four millimeter hook you will also of course need a darning needle for the ends Okay, the way that we form the stitch today is a little bit different to what we're used to doing. We are going to be picking up five stitches, working one way, and then removing them from our hook, going backwards, and we work on each individual square at a time. But we will be starting in a... Oh, wrong way round. <laughs> we will be starting in the bottom corner. And, and this is our first row, this is our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth and ninth. Okay, so you get to alternate your colours every other row. If you wish to, you don't have to of course, and you don't have to stick to two colours, you could go three, four, five and, and keep going that way. Okay, and as we work, we join the square, the new square to the old square. Okay, so our pattern starts with this square here, so it's number one, and then we go square two, square three for row two. And then we've got square four, five and six for row three, and, and you get the hint. If I keep going, this video is going to be a mega long. Okay, but if I can do it, and of course I did, and I did this before my channel, way before my channel, I'd only been crocheting at this point for about six months, okay, maximum of six months, and I'd only just moved into other stitches other than Aragurumi. So, if I could do it back then, you can easily do it now, 
come on and let's go and start this pattern so let's get started now for this one we are going to start by a chaining 10 super quick super simple now what we're going to be doing is we are going to be pulling up a loop over in the next five chains okay so we're going to skip the first chain and into the second chain pop your hook hook over pull up a loop we're going to do that again another four times you can keep these ones quite loose as well okay so once you've done that Sorry, I was getting carried away then. You will have a six loops on your hook. Now for the next step is to hook over and pull through two of those loops on your hook. Hook over, pull through two more loops. Hook over, pull through two more loops. You guessed it, hook over, pull through two. Hook over and pull through two. Now you've reached the end of that very first row. Now on to our second. Now this is where we need to identify these little lines going down for our stitches. And what we're going to do is once you've identified the first one, pop your hook in, hook over and pull up a loop. Now we're going to do the same on the second, the third and the fourth little line. Now there is no fifth so we need to uh, make our um, pull up our fifth loop so what we do is we are going to work into the very first unworked chain that you come across pop your loop hook in and uh, pull up another loop now at this point you will have six loops on your hook we're going to chain over we're going to pull through two of those loops then we're going to hook over again pull through and uh, the next two hook over the next two hook over pull through the next two, hook over, pull through the last two. Now we're going to repeat uh, that step for uh, two more times. Okay, so that's going backwards and forwards. So, or forwards and backwards, I should say. So we pick up those loops. You'll get to the point where you have five on your hook. Then we scoot over to the unworked chain, pop your hook in and pull up another loop. That gives us our sixth loop on the hook. We're going to hook over, pull through two, hook over, pull through two, hook over, pull through two. And we'll keep going all the way with hooking over and pulling through two till you get to the end. Fourth row. Do the same as before. Your work will curl a little bit don't worry about it it will straighten out over time or of course we'll just run a, a quick border around it and that'll straighten it out properly or fully okay so we've got five on our hook we need our sixth so we come over to our chain pull up that last that last loop hook over go back the way we came by hooking over and pulling through two Now this is our last row and you should at the end of it have one last unworked chain and all we're going to do here is pop our hook in, pull up a loop but we're going to pull that straight through for a slip stitch and we're going to do that all the way along for a count of three, four and then we're going to slip stitch into that very last unworked chain and at this point we chain one pull up our yarn cut it off scooch down that knot now that is your very first square done now it's time to move on to our second square so a grab or our second row now this second row will have a two squares in it so I grab your yarn, make a slip knot and pop it on your hook. Okay, once you've done that, grab your square. We are going to have our tails at the top 
and we are going from for the corner square that's I'm um, sorry the corner of the square on the vertical oh posh long words there but the other bottom corner <laughs> we're gonna pop our hook in hook over and pull up our yarn and slip stitch on oh slip stitch to join give that a gentle tug now for this and next row we're going to chain up five now i'm going to do the same as we've done previously along this bottom row so we're going to go into the second chain from the hook hook over and pull up your yarn don't work it any further remember and we're going to do that into the next chain we're going to come all the way down until we've got five loops on our hook because of course one of those is our starting loop and then there's the other four that we've pulled up now we are going to work into this start, the stitch again okay to pull up our fifth loop hook over pull through two and we're going all the way back again as we have done on previous rows now let's repeat the whole process hook under scoop up one two three and four and we're going to go into the next stitch there pull that up that's number five six loops on our hook hook over pull through two oh nearly over pull through two and that is as simple as the square is so now for row three we'll repeat row two making sure you pick up all of these loops all the way along then you want inside there now for row four repeat row three Now go back the other way. And now for row number five, this is the slip stitch row. with your last stitch being in the uh, top corner of your previous square now for block number three what we're going to be doing is popping our hook all the way through these stitches on the top here we're just going to pull up our loops okay your fourth should just be before one of the knots now what we're going to need to do is find the placement for our fifth so it is by the base tail okay so that is the tail where your chain was okay so if you just stick your hook in there and pull up that sixth loop we're all square to go right let's um remove two so hook over remove two and keep going until you get to the end of the row okay so and now it's time for row two of this square we are going to uh, go in as we have done previously under that diagonal um, stitch pop up 
the loop. Okay, so you'll notice now that you've got no more diagonals really to work on. So you've got to look to the side. Um, you have asked the stitch here. We are going to hook under the front loop there and then make sure you catch the uh, back loop as well. Boop. <laughs> hook over and pull through and there is your six loops on your hook. So then of course we go back again to the start with making sure that we only take two off at a time between hooking it over and pulling through. Now for the next row, it is a repeat of the row before. So, oh, let's pull up those four stitches working along the top of our work. And then of course we want to go into the V on the side our work, pull up a loop, hook over and now we're ready to go all the way back to the beginning again. Oh, I haven't quite made that stitch. There we go. So that is our repeat row three done so and now we're on to the uh, last one for so picking up these stitches that's five now work into that v again we should have a new v that's appeared you got the third there so uh, pick that one up Hook over and go back to the beginning. Okay, so we now have our four rows complete. Our fifth row, of course, is our slip stitch row. So that is hooking, going under that stitch again, hook over and pull through and finish as a slip stitch. And we are going to do that all the way along. And your very last one will again be in that corner V. So tilt your work, look up the row, find the last one, pop your hook in, and pull it through. Then we hook over. Oh, sorry about that. Pull up your yarn, scoot your knot down. And that is the end of row number two. Now let's move on to row number three. Now it's time to start row number three. So grab your, your yarn, whatever colour choice you're using. I'm going back to using my pink because I'm trying to get these balls of yarn <laughs> used up. Okay, so we're going to pop a slip knot on our hook and we're going to repeat the same joining method as we have done between blocks one and two. So now we are working onto a block number four. So pop your hook in, pull up a loop and a slip stitch it there we go so it's nice and tight now we're going to chain up five and then we're going to repeat what we did with a block number two so that is skip the first chain into the second pop your hook pull up a loop and do that for the next three stitches Okay, so you've now got five on your hook and the next one of course is going to go into the side of your work where you're going to pick up both of those loops on that very first one. Then it's a case of getting your hook back to the start again by hooking over and pulling through two. Hooking over, pulling through two, all the way to the end. So you've just got that one left. Now we pick up for row number 
do on this one and we are going to pick up those diagonal front loops and basically I repeat the same stitch work as you did for block number two now on block number four so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop talking now um, and I carry on this video in silence um, for this block slip stitch for row 5 Block number five. Row 5, slip stitch Now for block six, we will be repeating what we did for block number three. So uh, pop in to the top of each of these stitches and grab your loops. So we have our five there and then we are looking for 
Yep, so I'll just pop down one there. Okay, like that. Okay, basically this first one's a bit of a guess. This last one, sorry, is a little bit of a guess. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, then we scooch back to the beginning. Okay, row two. And turn your work, pick up that very first V. Yep. And there's our five, uh, six loops on our hook. Let's get back to the beginning again. Row four. Back to the beginning. And then our row five is, of course, our slip stitch. Making sure that you do that fifth slip stitch in the V on the edge. Just like that. Okay, chain one. Cut off that yarn and pull up your loop and scooch it down and all that. Okay, so that is the end of row three, block six. Okay, so what you're going to do now is check the timestamp in the description box down below where I'm going to take you back to the beginning of a row three. And all you're going to do is follow along the steps as you were doing. So your main concentration is, of course, the chain at the beginning and what you're doing at the end. Um, and you repeat this step, these steps all the way along. This and next row, of course, will have four squares in it. Row four, four squares. Duh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a moment. Okay, so once you have finished a row number four, meet me back here. Okay, so I have now completed a five rows of this stitch. Now I am bringing in my lemon peel square from the other week to do my measurements with it as a guesstimate. As you can see, it fits quite nicely along the side there. It also fits quite nicely coming up. Now, if your square is a bit tighter than mine and uh, sorry, your half a square is a bit tighter than mine and it's uh, not quite the same so it might be sitting sort of off about, like that much. Don't worry too much because we can add a border in uh, to bring it to the same size um, which we'll do at the end. But now uh, let's uh, jump on with our decreasing section. Before we start our decreasing section, what I'd like to suggest you do is uh, grab yourself a stitch marker and just stick it in the top here. Not directly in the corner but in the uh, top of the top square that way when you get working along you you can um not worry about getting a little bit carried away because as soon as you hit that you know you're not going around the corner 
Okay, so uh, let, as I said, uh, let's uh, get on with this now. So as you can see here, I'm just turning it sideways. It makes it a little bit easier for me and you to see. Right, and I need my purple because that's my next colour up. So I pop a, a slip knot on my hook. And just the same as we have done previously. Now, when it comes to joining our yarn, of course, we've been joining on the corner up to this point, but we are not going to be doing that now. We are now making our square square. So we are going to actually be joining into the top of the square here. Okay. Totally and utterly skipping off an entire square. So join your yarn with your slip stitch we're not chaining this time we are going straight in and we are picking up our five stitches going along so there we go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so now we have of course our six loops on the hook and we are going to carry on doing the same pattern as we have done previously. Okay, which is our four rows. Picking up these little front loops. Off. Followed by our one loop on the side of the next square and scooting all the way back again okay so you know I believe that you know where you're going from here we're just going to carry on repeating the pattern all the way down row five of course are we slip stitch through them as normal Now we work on to the next square. I will meet you back here when we're on this last square. Okay, so and now we are back for this a very last row on this square. And of course it is our slip stitch row. Once you've got to the end of this square, you should, if you're working alongside us um, for the stitch a week, you should have four purple squares for this row. Or sorry, four squares for this row. So, chain one, pull up your yarn, cut it off and scooch your knot down. Okay, so now we are going to repeat the process again by, by joining at the top here. I'm finishing here so I suggest that you move your stitch marker over so there is absolutely a no confusion yes I do this on quite a lot of the corner corner things that I make okay so I'm gonna leave you to get on with this now remember your slip stitching to the top there and then you are picking up the first four stitches along there or should I say you're working the stitches coming across here until you have got six loops on your hook okay and then you repeat the squares as you have been doing and we will keep doing that all the way along so we your box count i shouldn't really call it that but the squares that you'll make in this next row is only three and then it goes two and then it goes one i will meet you um, back here when you get down to one square Now it's time for that very last square, so I'll pop your slip knot on your hook and pop your hook through that very first stitch. Pull it up and pop a slip knot on your hook 
and of course this square is going to be done exactly the same way as the other ones in the pattern she says if she can get <laughs> through oh this is a little bit tight there we go Okay, so once you have your six loops on the hook, I'm going to hook over and finish off this row as you have done many, many times before. And of course, we are going to do our four rows going up and then finish off with our row of slip stitches. So I'm going to record it, but I'm sticking this square on fast forward. Now time for the slip stitch. And it's a case of a chain one and cut off your yarn. Unless of course your square is a little bit small and you need or want to add a border at this point you can add a border starting here if you're happy with using the colour that your last square is in. All you're going to now do is a plop, pop a single crochet into the uh, same place your chain came out of and then a single crochet all the way down the side of your work can also of course crochet over your ends if you wish to not really sew them in and uh, when you get to the corner you are going to place a, a single crochet chain one a single crochet into that very a corner stitch I'll meet you at the corner in a moment right so here we are up at the corner I've already placed in uh, four single crochets so now it is my fifth single crochet, chain one, down your work, and then I pop a, another single crochet into the same hole to uh, make your corner. And then of course there is another four stitches uh, to, uh, uh, sorry, single crochets to pop in the side of this square. And of course, a five single crochets into each square going along. And you're just going to carry on going like that all the way around until you reach the beginning stitch here where you're going to slip stitch to a join. I'll meet you back here in a second, mind. Okay, so now we're just coming up on the last section here. Very last square. There's stitch number five. Then we are going to uh, pick up the uh, first stitch of our border, slip stitch through, chain up one, pull up your yarn and cut it off. And there we go. And scooch your knot down. And then it's just a case of uh, sewing in any ends. As you can see, I've got some left. Um, sewing any ends and your square is then done. 
Right, that is it. That is the end of today's um, tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed uh, working alongside with me or of course just watching it because you felt like it. If you have made today's square, I would love to see your stitch work and your colour choices. The um, information on where you can send the photos is in the description box down below, but you can pop them on the Facebook page. You can also, of course, send me an email. Either way, I'd absolutely love to see it and of course include your work in next week's Whips, Bits and Chat. If you don't make it to next week's, don't worry about it. Just send it in anyway and I will send it into the next available Whips, Bits and Chat. My cutoff time is 4pm on Fridays and that is 4pm GMT. Um, and just in case you're in a different country to me. Right, that is it for me for today. I will see you all really, really soon if you can. Please stay in and definitely stay safe. Ta-ra for now, everybody.